from the military industrial complex after the Roswell crash was immediately put into place. All of the generals and admirals and advisors and scientists were contacted and ordered to proceed to uh, a base in Colorado where they were driven, picked up, and driven to the crash site. Now all of these men are, have gone to the scene to see for themselves uh, what uh, an alien vehicle looks like, and they were going to advise General Marshall directly, who was controlling everything from uh, remote position to telephones, on how to proceed. And when an operation is that big, you can't cover everything up. We discovered that the owner of the property where the, the vehicle came down was uh, arrested in his house with his family, and they were kept in the house for four days, not allowed to go outside or anything. All the roads in the area were blocked. All access was closed. People that lived close enough to lo know something about it were kept in their houses. Now, if it never happened, then this evidence wouldn't exist. But now we are finding solid evidence that something strange did happen and that, that these events actually took place. Then we found people who observed the recovery of the craft from a distance that saw the, the, the task force moving across uh, off roads over country to uh, a secure military facility at Los Alamos. Uh, and, and, and with these leads, we were able to turn up other witnesses, all of whom had been sworn to secrecy by their superiors at the time they participated in these events. And only a few of them would talk to us, and only on condition that they not be identified because of their vulnerability. Uh, what happens in a case of violation of security oaths of this nature, they could lose all pay and allowances due or ever to become due. They could be imprisoned. They, they could be fined. A, a lot of things that none of them could stand. Through Secretary of State General Marshall, the security of the UFO situation was intensified. A closer relationship developed between the military and Majestic 12. As time passed, the power of Majestic 12 grew stronger. Virgil Armstrong was an intelligence officer with the CIA and worked with highly classified assignments. He retired with the rank of major. I received documents which said that a UFO had landed in the middle of White Sands, New Mexico proving grounds and that this object was inert, was under surveillance, and uh, would be kept under surveillance until they could determine uh, whether it was hostile or friendly. It later turned out that uh, it was friendly in that the occupants were dead, and uh, when we got aboard, there were five bodies. The bodies uh, were diminutive in size, in other words, 3.5 feet. The largest one was uh, just under four feet, Two of them were obviously the commanding officers uh, because two of them wore epaulets on their shoulders. Uh, later it turns out that they were all male. When we flew them back to Wright-Patterson, of course, the examination, physical examination, and the autopsy, of course, revealed that they were indeed all male. From descriptions given by several witnesses, the aliens have very large eyes, a small nose, and a small mouth. They are usually about three feet, six inches in height and have no body hair. Now, consider, if you will, the position of the United States government at this time. They proudly thought of themselves as the most powerful nation on Earth, having recently produced the atomic bomb and won World War II with it. They had built a jet aircraft that exceeded the speed of sound in flight or wood in October of 47. They had built bombers with intercontinental range that carried weapons of enormous destruction. Now, imagine what it was like for these same leaders, all of whom had witnessed the panic of the Orson Welles broadcast in the War of the Worlds in 1938. Thousands of Americans panicked at a realistically presented invasion of Earth. But imagine their horror as they actually viewed the dead bodies of the real aliens. Imagine their shock as they tried to determine how these saucers were powered and could discover no part even remotely similar to components they were familiar with. No cylinders, no pistons, no propellers, no vacuum tubes. It's only when you fully understand the overwhelming helplessness the government was faced with in the summer of 1947 can you comprehend their perceived need for a total, thorough, and sweeping cover-up to include the use of deadly force.
President Truman ordered a heightened level of security after the capture of a live alien from a UFO which had crashed. Because of the ever-increasing numbers of UFO sightings at the time, it was decided to create a project called Blue Book, which was designed to suppress public knowledge and create an atmosphere of ridicule around the subject of UFOs. Professor J. Allen Hynek was a professor of astronomy and an astronomical advisor to the United States Air Force on their UFO educational program. And I know the, the, the job they had. Uh, they were told not to excite the public. Uh, don't uh, rock the boat. Uh, and I saw it in my own eyes happened that whenever a case happened that they could explain, which is quite a few, they made point of that and, and uh, let that out to the media. Things that, the, the cases that were very difficult to explain, they would jump the handsprings to keep the, uh, the media away from it. For their, they had a job to do, uh, to, whether rightfully or wrongly, to keep the public from getting excited. A live alien was captured in 1948 after a UFO crashed in America. He refused to communicate for one year and was given the name EBE, -E, or Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. He later began to communicate and gave details of his home planet. EBE -E had a large crystal which he linked to his mind telepathically and was able to communicate with his own race. He was also able to see into the past and future and perform many other amazing feats. He told of believing in the universe as the supreme being and stated that his race lived in harmony without wars and had nearly eliminated all diseases. He said they lived to approximately 800 years of age and that their technology was far in advance of ours. The authorities were amazed by the things they were shown through the crystal. EBE was able to communicate with huge spaceships which were holding orbital positions thousands of miles from the Earth. He told them that their craft were capable of reaching areas in the universe beyond our imagination and that they were operated by thought control coupled to biological computers and consequently did not have any control systems as we understood them. He talked about his planet and how their technology had created a system where everything was self-functional and did not require a workforce to operate it, and that everything was monitored from a central control system. He said that technicians were present there. He said their power source was eternal energy from the cosmos. He told them that his race didn't have a government like Earth, but a society governed by wise elders who sat in council to make decisions of policy. They did not have a monetary system because the needs of the people were catered for by the Federation, which made them all equal. At the request of the aliens, a meeting was arranged with President Eisenhower in 1954. It took place amid tight security at a secret location. 